Denzel Lloyd, welcome to Property Insights. Thanks, Mark. Uh, all the way down here from, uh, where'd you come from, Ballin or Gold Coast? Which airport Gold you Coast. Gold Coast, Philip Fair Gold Coast. But you operate in the Northern Rivers area. That's right, so we're based in Byron Bay, but yep. we service quite a wide geography. Um, our agency is the largest in the Byron Shire. Well, what's it called? First National Byron First Bay. National, yep. Yeah. Um, we've been established there for over 30 years, so very well integrated in so the community. where do you cover? You cover which areas? Well, there's Byron, no Byron, there's Byron. no fixed footprint to it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but you know, we will go f- further south than Ballina, and then right almost up to the Queensland border. Right. Occasionally, and but our, our key geography is the two four eight one postcode Byron Bay and yeah. the surrounds. Yeah, Mullum, Mullum Bimby, Mullum Bimby, Nurabar, Brooklet, um, Federal. Um, there's many little pockets out in the hinterland that. Clones. Clones that are, you know, um, I guess to many people, they they might not know they're there um, until, you know, they maybe start their property search. And then there's this beautiful discovery process that there is many little hinterland destinations that each have their own unique identity. So when we think about Byron Bay, it's not just... The beach. The beach. Yeah, absolutely. So like, um, I have a farm up that way and um, and I... And I but I, and I love the territory, I mean, but I've been going there for more than 20 odd years now in terms of my property. Yeah. Um, and it's been more recently discovered, COVID helped people discover Byron, or a lot of people discovered Byron. What actually happened during that COVID period to Byron? Was it property so, prices? So and and, may, and maybe, maybe Denzel, you could sort of start off in Byron, like the town, yeah. and then move out as to what happened with prices and sure. interest, etc. So it's a narrative that we saw play out in a lot of coastal destinations. Through COVID, we saw an exodus from metropolitan areas. So people looking for um, an alternative to the density of the cities. Also, as a phenomenon through COVID, we were introduced to the concept or the proof of the concept of distributed workforces, decentralization. So a lot of larger companies let people work from wherever they want to be. And if you could choose, why wouldn't you choose Byron Bay? I mean, it's a pretty... Well, why do you choose? Well, why would someone choose Byron Bay then? Okay, so, um, and this is, you know, something that we can perhaps both speak about because you chose it as a, you know, an, a, an alternative to Sydney as well. Um, I first went there in 1995. I'm, I came from old South Wales in the UK to New South Wales and I arrived in Sydney, drive up the coast and Byron Bay just resonated with me. And I think it has that effect on a lot of people. Why? I think there are a lot of small towns along the eastern seaboard, seaboard that are equally as geographically beautiful, but Byron has something special. It, it's the people, the diversity of the demographic that you won't find in any other small town, I feel. Um, it has a very tangible, creative undercurrent coupled with a very thriving business community and an entrepreneurial spirit. and. You know, now you see, as I say, that diversity of demographic is something that you might only find in a city. So you've got, you know, if we run through some stereotypes, you know, you've got surfers, intergenerational farmers, the old school landholders, alternative lifestylers, we don't call them hippies anymore. Um, uh, As I say, thriving business entrepreneurial spirit, because there's a lot of business there that... um, People making a go of it themselves rather than, you know, large, there's not a lot of l- large company employers as you might find in the city. Um, then you've got movie stars and billionaires. So there's a little bit of everything there. Um, and that's very exciting. Now what we're seeing is um, a change in the, the landscape there through COVID, through that period, through the last phase of the property market with you know, lower finance rates um, and and bigger developers coming to town. We're seeing the rise of some really high-end boutique luxury apartments. And that's going to change the landscape in Byron because that hasn't been a product that's been widely available before. 
Um, so that's very exciting. We've just launched one on Johnson Street called Bohemian. Have to do a little plug for that. Is that down near the Mitre 10? It's, that's Johnson Lane, which launched, opened, officially opened last week. This is, we're selling off plan next to the old Woolies. Um, so it's LuxCon, the Sydney developer, and it's 44 luxury apartments. Four owner operators. I think that's a, you know, an interesting distinction because there's a lot of holiday letting. Obviously, it's very popular in Byron, but there's lots of downsizers looking for a bolt hole um, that they can call their own and they, they're not in close proximity to high volume holiday letting. So, but just coming back to your question about COVID and what was the dominant narrative through there. So large acreage was extremely popular um, and for obvious reasons. I think a lot of people wanted a buffer around them. Um, so people were moving up looking for that lifestyle acreage without the view of becoming a farmer. People just wanted the security of a buffer around them. Um, and you know, as COVID has relaxed now, um, as I say, that the products in Byron, the product offering is starting to change, and that's exciting. That, that's that's interesting for me. So, did did Byron, sort of on average, and average is always a bit just misleading, but did Byron and the surrounding areas, did they all go up in price substantially? Because I've heard and read lots of stories, there was like ridiculous increase, like forty percent increase in prices. That's right. And where is it now? Is it somehow come back a little bit, or who were the buyers? You know, what were they buying these things for? Were they buying them just to rent them, or were they buying them to improve them, live in them, or flip them? What were they doing? So through COVID, obviously, we saw a lot of uh, buyers from out of the area looking for a property that they could use themselves because of international travel restrictions. Now that's eased, um, we're starting to see the local contingent of buyers coming back to the forefront. That's about 45% of our buyer demographic. Um, What's local? How do you mean local? Like? Local. Well, and that's an, also an interesting stat because what we often find is people will move up and they'll rent to get a feel for the lie of the land and then they feel secure, ready to buy something. Buy something. So that stat is a little bit skewed, but um, you know, it's probably 27% Sydney, a quarter from Sydney, half local being the Byron Shire. And then you've got, you know, Melbourne being about 12%, Queensland. And through COVID, there was a lot of international a lot of sight unseen purchases, um, but that's obviously come back to a pre-COVID level now. And so the, the prices have come back. The prices, so yeah, so <coughs> phenomenal growth through COVID, and I'd say probably on average about you know between a fifteen to twenty-five percent pullback. Obviously, this year, this calendar year has been a eventful one with the floods, and there's areas and properties that would have been directly affected by that. But, you know, there's also, I think it's, it's uh, so, so there's a variance in, in the market fluctuation there. There's an overall contraction of the market and then there's other pockets that have been more directly affected as a consequence of flooding, although that is now becoming more of a memory. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, and it's sort of a bit more, it's up around Moolambar, Mullum, Mullum, and then Liz, definitely, Liz, for, but definitely further to Lismore. Yeah, um, Byron itself ha had a flood, but it was more in town, uh, more the shops and stuff yes. like that. And uh, that it's a pretty unusual event that that happened there. Yeah, uh, I just because I'm always trying to get my head around Byron. Um, I keep thinking oh, I can't keep going up in price, but the phenomenon that exists in Byron is that there are state government rules and council rules that you can't do developments beyond a certain curtain or curtilage mm. around Byron. So where I, I am, I can look out, over, I look out of Byron the town mm. and I can see where that curtilage stops. And unless government changes its mind as to density, in other mm. words, opening areas up to be developed into housing, mm. um, all that can happen is, assuming there's demand, all that can happen is um, the demand can only be met by a small supply. Absolutely. There's not that many houses yep. or apartment buildings. Perhaps they can increase density, like you're saying. They're, start, they're starting to get a few luxury apartments get built there. Yeah. We've never really seen that in the past. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be that they all seem to be selling because people you know, sort of want to buy it as a holiday home or whatever. Mm. Um, do, you, do you see buying getting to a point, though, where people say, ah, 
it's now the Gold Coast? No, um, for a few reasons. Firstly, I mean, what you've just pointed out there is, is spot on. There is a fundamental supply and demand ratio, which is kept in check by the planning regulations. There's very little new land gazetted for urban development. There's going to be some infill development, but that's capped. You know, there's height limits in place to try and preserve the aesthetic identity of Byron. I'm actually on the Byron Master Plan Committee, very passionate with with Chris Henley, um, our principal, yep. who chaired it for many years. Um, because we're both passionate about the future of Byron and you know, through that process, it's a beautification of Byron, but also sitting with the strategic planners and really trying to preserve the identity of the town. And so you know, the Gold Coast, I think Byron needs a point of difference to the Gold Coast. I mean, the Gold Coast now is, is very exciting, but it's a, a strip of high rise development on the coast and Byron looks very different to that. And it needs to always look different to that, to re preserve its uniqueness. Um, and again, coming back to will it ever will it ever become faded or lose its sparkle? Again, I think it's such a unique offering that in terms of the mix of retail, hospitality, lots of new restaurants open now, the beach, the surf, the hinterland, beautiful national parks and and yeah, that diversity, I think that makes it very special. Coming back to the idea of what happened through COVID where you've got distributed workforces and everybody moving out of the city. Now there's gonna be a continuation of that as a legacy, but it's more of a hybrid model now. So what we're seeing is people being based in Byron, having a job in a city, but maybe out of a fortnight flying down for a night or two three two or three days of meetings and coming back to Byron and if that is a lifestyle that resonates with people where better to live than somewhere like Byron that, that's yeah. an interesting point and, and just on that Denzel how important is are the following things in terms of making a place desirable one beaches beautiful beaches yeah two proximity to airport yep. and flights coming in and out of the airport, as opposed to you know, not having enough flights in and out. Hospitals, in case you're older and you, want to, you worry mm -hmm. about, well, mm -hmm. you know, if I fall down the stairs or someone has a heart attack, I mean, yep. hospital, access to hospitals. Schools, mm. good quality schools. Um, and other amenities, let's call other amenities like a golf, be, be a golf course perhaps, or, um, you know, just national parks like you mentioned how important are they as factors when a buyer is looking at making a decision as to where he or she should invest its their money how important are those factors and does Byron have all those covered great question yes they are absolutely a factor I don't know if they're top of mind for people when they begin their search it's a conversation that myself and my colleagues are having increasingly in this market because buyers are concerned about the market and that they might be overpaying. And the conversation we try to encourage is bringing their search back to, in most cases, the search for a home. And when you're looking, when you're considering where you might like to have a home, these are the factors that really play into that. And Byron certainly ticks the boxes. You've got service by two airports, this morning I flew down, it was a little bit complicated, but you do have two options. Being there. the Gold Coast and Ballina? Yeah, being Gold, Gold Coast and Ballina. One's 30 minutes from Byron, one's 50 minutes. Um, you've got the local Byron Hospital, which is only a couple, two, three years old. No, longer. Time goes fast. My daughter was going to be born there and she's six. So six years old. Um, and then you've got the new Tweed Hospital. That's a half billion dollar hospital, state of the art and that's under construction about 50 minutes north of Byron, obviously serviced by an amazing array of schools with different syllabi. So you've got um, the uh, Cape Byron Steiner schools, there's quite a few options for Steiner, the Living School, which is um, an alternative syllabus school. They have that uh, one in Bali called the Green School. And then you've got you know Catholic, state schools, there's lots of options. 
The lifestyle is widely recognised. Um, there's a golf. There's well, we've got a golf course. We've got you know, and and a few other new or, or revamped smaller courses in the hinterland. Um, and then, as I say, you know the the options for dining and shopping are really second to none on the eastern seaboard. I mean, Yamba's a beautiful town, but have you ever been there after seven o'clock? Mm. Crickets, yeah, just yeah, crickets, yeah, mate. Yeah, it's yeah. very quiet, you yeah, know. Yeah, totally. And it'll take fifteen years. It'll, you know, it will blossom, but it's going to take a long time. I mean, yeah, totally. Byron, Byron's always been popular, you know, from the days of Strop and Cornell, uh, you know, Strop and, and yeah, yeah, and you know, and Hoax, Hoax, that's right. And you know, and now we've got uh, Hollywood actors there, but I think it's always been. Um, popular for many reasons it's also it's a mecca for realignment i think that is something that we find a lot what do you mean by that so i think people move to byron with an aspiration with a plan of recalibrating their life often Hmm. it's somewhere where people can reconnect with nature um You know, there's, as I say, that spiritual undercurrent there. There's like every day of the week, there's some yoga or spiritual workshop you can do. Like, you name it, it's there, you know, healing. um, And, and, you know, that will resonate with people to varying degrees. But is there another place in Australia that has a higher concentration of that? You can also go to the hardcore gyms too. You can go to the industrial state. You can go to an MMA gym if you want to. Sweat it out. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So you can do sort of pretty much everything. And you and I aren't here to sing the praise of of the Byron Shire, but um, it's it's got a bit of everything. That's right. And it's all, but it's all in one small place. I mean, Sydney's got a bit of everything too, Mm -hmm. but like you've got to go a long way out to enjoy some of these things, you know, or you've got to go a long way in to enjoy some of these things. Whereas in Byron, it seems like everything sort of within 10 k's 100% and you can yeah. pretty much go to everything yeah. Um, yeah. in in some respects not what, stuck in traffic n- no yeah. way well, well you can get a bit of traffic bit. Yeah. If you get school time traffic is a bit of a yeah. bit of a hassle but yeah. it, it can I do you think I, I got a friend who he bought an air uh, a property with the intention of letting Airbnb pay it off he bought it during COVID period paid quite a bit of money for a three plus um, but then the whole Airbnb died in the ass um, just it just disappeared like People stop going to Byron uh, for some reason, like holidaying. I don't know if that's still still a thing, but this is um, at, during this year. He noticed that the bookings, or whatever you want to call it, were far less mm-hmm. at some stage during the year. I don't know about now, but during the year, um, and therefore the and the, with interest rates going up, his whole Airbnb strategy was a little bit um, sus. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, he he told me that. It, he got some valuations and it looks as though the value value of the property he bought in about two years ago is probably down a bit now, so he's not feeling too uh, flash about his decision. Yeah. Um, is there any truth in that and should buyers be cons- careful of that maybe it's a bit of the rental shine's gone off Byron? Is that a thing? The, absolutely. Well, again, and it's very easy to contextualise that. What we saw through COVID was people from all over the country wanting to go somewhere for a break, Byron was red, red hot when travel restrictions weren't in place. Now that people can go anywhere, there's people being dreaming of the Amalfi Coast and, you know, or Bali, whatever it is, people are exploring those places that they missed for so, so long. But that won't last forever because what Byron offers is a convenience. Yeah. If you've got a family and you've got, (coughs) hey, we've got like five days here, Schlepping to Bali, I've done it a few times. It's not worth it in that. It can sometimes cannot be worth it in that little gap. And also, you can drive to Byron. You can drive to Byron. You know, get surfboards on the rack. Yeah. So, so there's that. Another thing that's affecting the market at the moment is there's a new local. Well, it's a statewide policy of holiday letting restrictions. So it's a 180 day cap. Byron has an amendment to that. They've capped it at 90 days. So you can only rent your place 90 days a year? 90 days, non-consecutive. Nope. Non-consecutive. So you can do Easter, Christmas, 90 days. The peak, yeah. peak holiday times. And you can you know, generate a pretty good return because they're the most popular times. But obviously there's a lot of people who purchase property predicated on the amazing opportunity to, to, to get a return from a property when they're not using it. Um, so for those property owners 
it's it's a it's an interesting time. I think the policy is highly flawed because what they're trying to do, because we have a housing shortage, Byron Shire Council are trying to say, well, there's X amount of properties in the short term rental pool and if we put this cap on them owners are going to flip them over into the long term rental pool to offer rental but nobody nobody's going to do that you know if if you've got a beach house in Byron as a not your principal place of residence you, you want to be able to use it yourself so you're yeah. not going to put it in the, so it's a policy that's just not going to work so how, how do the, um, and so if you're a buyer um, what should be, you should be looking for now from Byron? What, 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 where, where's the hot spot? What should you be looking at buying where there's some momentum? So, look, I think uh, through COVID, you know, the, the hinterland saw tremendous growth. Um, I think some people will be a little bit overwhelmed by the management of acreage. There's actually a bit of work required. So, you know, there no, might be... i got a farm. Some, right, you've got a couple hundred acres. Yeah, I've got a farm. It's, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of work in it. Yeah, yeah. And you've got beautiful highland. Yeah, you know, I'm up on the hill, and yeah. I've got, but I got full time staff. Yes. And but, but Pete Robbo, I know Robbo. Yeah, Robert, yeah. But, it, but well, it's but it's a full on thing. Yes. So uh, you know, like, yes. it's not for everyone. That's right. But I think a lot of people have you know dived headfirst into it, and you know there may be now, again with international travel, and we're talking about the higher end of the market there. There might be some opportunities there. Um, certainly now with with you know the CBD, you know, there's some great opportunities for apartments, both for holiday let or for uh, principal places of residence. Um, with the holiday letting thing, there is one consideration, and that is if you have a multi-dwelling property, that is a house with a studio, or in Byron there's a lot of dual occupancy, yep. so two residences on the one title. If you have that scenario and somebody's living permanently in one of the dwellings, you can holiday let the other one without restriction, so 365 days a year. So there's a lot of properties with granny flats and so on and so forth, so that's a loophole. Which works, uh, which works for investors. Works for investors, yeah. yeah. So that means that they're uncapped and they can go 365. Obviously, it makes more sense when the demand is there, as, as your friend has noticed, you know, there is a slight contraction with that holiday letting demand, but it, it's coming back. Are there any good opportunities up there? I mean, where should people, what should we people looking at in the buyer and shine now, if you're an investor? Yeah, so I think um, obviously elevation now, you know, well, you can see, you know, that what people are calling it out a one in a 500 year flood. Yeah. Um, but it really has indicated where's high and dry and where's a property that's not going to be affected by that. Um, um, there's uh, also community titles, which is a type of property title which is very prolific in Byron Bay. So the way that way, the best way to explain that is is kind of like a strata for rural land. So you might get 100 acres and there'll be 10 community titles there. So everybody has four acres. That's a total of 40 acres and then they all have a share in the residual 60 acres. Now there's a new planning policy that on those properties, dual occupancy is now permitted. So if you have in-laws or you, know, you wanted a second residence for holiday letting or supplementary income, you can now do that on community title. So there's good value in that? Yes, yeah. So that, that, then, that, then, that, that was not a possibility before. It was for, you know, for Torrance title only. Yep. So it's a new policy. That's good. So I, mean, so I, I think what you're sort of saying though is uh, overall, Byron Bay still represents, Byron Shire mm. still represents really good value. And it's got, would you say it's over time, it will continue to grow? Absolutely. Yeah. Because, because when you look at the alternatives, as I say, there isn't, there's nothing like yeah, it. Yeah. There really isn't. You know, it's, it's a very special mix and I think that will continue to, um, continue to, shine above all the other options. At the, you know, the top end of the market, we're seeing new records being set. There was you know, f uh, sale just a couple of weeks ago, 26 million in Suffolk Park. Um, there's a new off-market listing looking for 40 million in the hinterland. So there's some big numbers, you know, and um, I think that to me always signifies 
a very bullish long-term view in Byron. And can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. You remember your first property? My what, first First property you ever bought? Yes. How old were you? I was in my 20s. And what, tell me about it. What'd you buy? Where'd you buy? Um, so it's actually in Byron and it um, was an, uh, a f something we bought together as a family. It was uh, an old farm and um, we have now subdivided that. So it's taken, it's been a long journey. And, yeah. what would you say, and now, now that was a long time ago, so what would you say to your 21 year old self again in terms of um, investing in property? I was older, yeah, it was late, late 20s. Uh, I would say start, the, the sooner you start, the better it's, you know, time, time in the market is, is it's, it's like compounding, you know, it's, it's um, I, I was a very nomadic, Throughout, throughout my 20s and 30s, I've traveled and worked all around the world. Um, so uh, I think if I'd have uh, yeah, focused on, on an anchor earlier, that would have been beneficial. Because time, time gives you the benefit over yeah. time. Over yeah. time, you make money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it probably just makes money yes. over time. Yes. When well, you look at the median in Byron, yeah, it's totally. Yeah. Especially someone like Byron, which is, in terms of supply, limited. It's, yeah. it's not gonna, it may over time give, you know, yeah. fill out. In other words, mm -hmm. take over some of those farms yeah. further out that you can, yeah. you know, people can start to build houses on, etc. But it's going to be a, a lot of arm twisting before that happens because yes. people would like, you know, you're you're part of the strategy for Byron, but like it's about preserving the nature of Byron, which basically means keep as much uh, green land as possible, yeah, yeah. And green space as possible, yes. which means restrict the amount of people who can come into the joint, yes. which means if everybody still wants to come in the place, there's the only a limited number of places they can buy. So that's right. That's that's and you're, you're right. I think that's. Probably the best advice if you're a young person, doesn't matter what you buy. Mm -hmm. If you want to buy and buy and buy the shittiest place. Yes. Over time, you'll yes. make money out of it. Yeah. And look, and look for, for first home buyers, I mean, that's not a section of the market that I work much in. Um, but there are opportunities now in that section. You know, there's, there's, as I say, off the back of the floods, you know, there's some areas which have been... Uh, now offering better value, but then it requires some vision on on how to mitigate f another scenario like that in the future. So you know, there's now entry level properties back six hundred, seven hundred thousand. There hasn't been something that's been available at all for many years. Sub a million, there's just really not been a lot at all. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, you've got surrounding areas. There's newest, you know, for for first time buyers. Um, new new estates um, towards between so south of Byron between Byron and Ballin and like Cumberland um, new land releases there it's in a, a different local council district that have gazetted more land for release so there's opportunities there for people who want to entry level and then see that appreciate over time well thanks very much I appreciate your time um, it, it, what's really important here is that Byron Bay or the whole district has been on fire, for, in my case, probably like for, since I've been going there 40 years. Yeah. Um, and it's never disappointed. It has its dips, but yes. then it just seems to take off. Yes. And there's a reason for it. There's a multitude of reasons for it, most of which you've covered, all of which you've covered today. But it is one special place yes. in Australia. Yeah. And everyone around the world to heard of Byron Bay. Yes. Everyone who comes here wants to travel to yeah. Byron Bay. For, right. And there's a so reason right. for that. So. If you can find the right place, you can afford to buy it and you can afford to hang on to it, mm -hmm. most importantly, whether it's through B &B, Airbnb rentals or just permanent rental or even if you want to live there, it's probably a good place to consider in terms of your portfolio. Absolutely. Appreciate yes. your time. Yeah, thanks awesome. so much, Mike. Pleasure. Thank you.